the most important mythological story in Egyptian mythology is the story of Isis and Osiris. Now, you may be wondering, this is a history class, not a mythology class, why are we talking about ancient mythology? Well, the reason is because I think in many ways you can tell a lot about a society by the stories that they tell about their own past and even about their own religious history and mythology. So we're going to use the story of Isis and Osiris today as a little insight into Egyptian life and Egyptian religious practices. Right, so the story begins that way back in the beginning of time there were these four ancient Egyptian gods and goddesses, all of them brothers and sisters to each other. There was Isis and Osiris, but also Set and Nephthys. So Isis, Osiris, Set, and Nephthys. Isis and Osiris were brothers and sisters, and they were also married, and Set and Nephthys were also brothers and sisters, and they were also married. It seems a little odd that um, brothers and sisters marry each other in Egyptian religion. However, it seems that this happened in Egyptian society as well. Pharaohs, as a rule of course, married their sisters. So all the Egyptian kings or pharaohs were married to their sisters. And some evidence we have shows that in around 20% of Egyptian marriages, brothers and sisters were married to one another. So odd, but not as odd in the Egyptian context as it may seem. Well, Osiris is seen as this very vitally important figure in Egyptian mythology. He's often considered to be the first pharaoh. He supposedly taught the Egyptians how to read and write. He showed them how to farm. In, in, in general, he's the founder of Egyptian civilization, at least in the Egyptians' eyes. And his brother, Set, was very jealous of him and decided one day to kill Osiris. And, and the way he chose to do it kind of a little bit odd. He snuck up on Osiris while Osiris was sleeping. And you'd think at this point he'd just stab him to death or something. But instead he measures him with a measuring stick and finds out how tall and wide and uh, tall, tall, wide and long Osiris is. He goes to the local carpenter and asks the carpenter to make a very special coffin or sarcophagus that was exactly designed to fit Osiris's body. And then, uh, I, uh, Set, excuse me, goes off to a banquet where Osiris and his friends are partying. And he announces that he has a special prize, namely this beautiful, ornate, golden coffin. And whoever can fit in it, gets it. And so, of course, everybody gets up very excited, and they line up, and they all try to take their turns fitting in the coffin, and everyone is either too small or too big, too tall, too short, whatever. Uh, finally, at the very end, Osiris steps into the coffin, and it fits him perfectly. And so what does Set do? He slams the coffin shut, he nails it shut, and he throws it into the river, the Nile River, of course. Now, Isis... Osiris's wife goes on a huge quest to find the coffin. And in longer versions of the story, I mean, this quest goes on forever. And we're going to skip most of the quest bits. Finally, Isis narrows down the location of the coffin, finds out where it is, and Set hears about it. And so what does he do? He sneaks out, finds the coffin himself, and chops it into 13 or 14 pieces and throws all those pieces into the Nile River. Now, Isis then goes on a quest to find all the pieces of her dead husband, and she manages to find all but one. Apparently, Osiris's genitals were eaten by a fish. So Isis goes and takes a piece of wood and carves a new penis for Osiris, and then she reattaches all the body parts together, has sex with the corpse, and is impregnated by uh, her dead husband, and she gives birth to a new god named Horus, the avenging son. Meanwhile, Os Isis uses her magical powers to make Osiris not quite live again, but to head down to the underworld, the afterlife, and become the king and ruler of the afterlife. Horus uses his newfound anger to go and murder Set, the man who killed his father, and everything sort of made a right. 
Well, in the context of Egyptian society, this myth was vitally important. So, for instance, every pharaoh, while he was alive, was considered to be an incarnation of the god Horus, the son of Isis and Osiris, and the man who fights against evil. When a pharaoh died, they built those giant pyramids for him to help him make his way to the afterlife, where they believed he would become Osiris, ruler of the dead. Now, this myth allowed for the prospect of an afterlife, and as time went on, more and more Egyptians began to believe that an afterlife was possible. Ultimately, by the end of Egyptian history, uh, most people believed that they had access to some form of afterlife, all basically because of this legend of Isis and Osiris.